and welcome back to another episode of Finn's Chats. In today's video, we're going to be looking at the overall landscape of the UFC's heavyweight division. The main event this Saturday is Shamil Gazeev taking on Jairin Zell Rosenstrike. That brought to my attention that there might be problems in the heavyweight division that no one's willing to address. So without further ado, let's get into the video. Okay, first I just wanted to look at the main event taking place this Saturday. We have Jairinzio Rosenstrike, who's ranked number 12, going up against unranked Shamil Gazeev. Now we take a look at Jairinzio Rosenstrike, 13 and 5, 12 KO wins, 9 in the first round. You know, it sounds good in theory, but when you look at his resume, it's it's not the best. He has a KO win against Chris Dawkins, who we knew had no chin, a KO win against Augusto Sakai, who we also knew had no chin, and a KO win against Junior Dos Santos, who was at the end of his career when he fought Biggie Boy at that time. If you take away those three bouts, he's lost his other five fights to Jaelton Almeida, who grappled him and just destroyed him on the mat, Volkov, who just starched him with the KO punch, Curtis Blades, who just grappled him and destroyed him for three rounds, Cyril Gan, who masterclassed him on the feet, and he got utterly starched by Francis Ngannou in the first round. Now, keep in mind, guys, the only reason I'm bringing this to your attention is because Rosenstrike is currently ranked 12. They're trying. What the UFC is trying to say is he is the 12th best heavyweight in the entire world. This is his resume for the past four years, and there is not one notable win that I can scout. Now we're keeping that same energy, and we're going to Shamil Gaziev's sure dog. He's 12 and 0, but here's a startling fact that I came across. He's currently 34 years old, and Biggie Boy is 35, guys. So Shamil Gaziev is supposed to be, you know, this UFC prospect that we should be on the lookout for but the guy's 35 you know like he is eight he is 12 and 0 that's not bad eight by knockout three by sub so he can finish you on the feet he can finish you on the ground that's always good to know but he only has one win in the ufc and it took place two months ago and all of a sudden they're just bolstering up you know to number 12 rosen strike i think that's a little fishy Let's dive, let's dive even deeper. Let's dive even deeper. We look at the UFC 1 through 15 heavyweight rankings. Tom Aspinall as your interim champ. He's good. He's going to probably be taking on Cyril Gunn. That's also good. But we also have John Jones taking on Stipe for the title. So those, those four guys, they're locked. They're done. They're locked. They're going to be fighting each other in some kind of fashion. Then we look at number seven. Jailton Almeida. He's taking on number five, Curtis Blades. Now, if... Almeida wins that one. Okay, we have a fifth person to talk about. Jones, Stipe, Aspinall, Gon, Almeida. If Blades wins that, now the division is looking kind of chalked. Because we scroll a little further. Alexander Volkov. Who wants to see him in any kind of heavyweight title match? Not even close. He's been in the UFC for 30 years. Sergey Spivak just got destroyed by Cyril Gon. He's out. Tied to Ivasa. He's a good KO artist, but he's like a meme fighter, you know? Like, he'll he'll KO you, but when it comes to a good fighter like Cyril Gan, he got masterclass. Volkov, he got destroyed. You know, he is not nowhere to be talked about. Derek Lewis is number 10, guys. Everyone knows Derek Lewis, and he's number 10 currently. That is wild. Marcin Tybor just got sent to the Shadow Realm by Tom Aspinall. We got Biggie Boy, like we mentioned earlier. Alexander Romanov is a fraud, and Volkov fraud-checked him, and he is someone I don't want to see in the near future. And then Rogerio de Lima, who shouldn't even be a heavyweight, is number 14, and Rodrigo Nascimento is 15. What are we doing in this division? We look even further. We go to the topology, the current MMA top 50 heavyweights in the entire world. We got everyone, like I just said, but then we keep scrolling, is there anyone you guys really care about? Like, Shamil Gazeev is 19, supposedly. All right. Waldo Cortez Acosta. Does anybody care about that guy? I didn't think so. Martin Budai just lost to Shamil Gazeev. Dante Mays is fighting Kyle Machado, who just lost his last fight. Justin Taffa is 26. Justin Taffa, the guy who just got out of his fight against Delima to have his brother come in. You know, it's actually even funnier. J Junior Tafa's 48. <laughs> There's not a single good guy here. Maybe Evgeny Kontrov. Like, who even is that? Bruno Capeloso's in the PFL. He just lost. Like, 
there's no one good here that people care about. Maybe Carl Williams. Maybe Carl Williams is the guy that we're going to be looking at as the future of the UFC heavyweight division. Because it's not going to be Augusto Sakai. It's not going to be Blagoy Ivanov. It's not going to be Andre Arlovsky. And Muhammad Usman has somehow risen the ranks to number 30. Having zero striking. Crazy. Zero striking. But he's number 30. That's wild. Okay, so if you still don't believe me and you still think, oh, Fence, you're just gassing it up. The heavyweight division will be fine. Well, there's actually another section on topology that shows you heavyweight prospects. Let's look at these guys. Simone Bajor, 25 and 10. He's the number two ranked heavyweight prospect in the world. He is 25 and 10. We go to Hatef Moeli. He's coming off two decision wins. Two decision wins. He had a four, a 5KO streak, you can see right there. But now he has two two decision wins, guys. Like, what has happened? Justin Frazier, 12-3. and three. He got subbed very recently. That's number one. That's number one. Let's just keep looking. Thomas Peterson. <laughs> he just lost to Jamal Pogues and he's number seven, guys. The division is clipped but there might be one savior robelis despagne now he's 4-0 and the ufc is clamoring to this guy like it's their last straw like it's that he is the final hope for the ufc heavyweight division like the fact that we let francis nagano walk away is crazy let's look at this guy despagne huh he has four first round finishes all by ko that's pretty good guys that's pretty good, but he's fighting Josh Parisian at UFC 299 in a couple weeks at Miami. If he loses to Parisian, the UFC is clipped. If he beats Parisian, we still don't even know if this guy is good. And this is our last hope, guys. This guy, this beautiful face right here. We need to see more of this guy. Now, it's not that I'm glazing him. You know, I could care less. But... The heavyweight division is just un un clipped beyond belief. And this is our last hope. Thank you guys for getting to the end of the video. Make sure you leave a like. Let me know in the comments what you think about the current state of the heavyweight division. I think it's kind of clipped. Like, not gonna lie, if Aspinall beats Gon, and then Gon becomes clipped, and Blades, be Blades beats Jailton, and then Jailton becomes clipped, then we really only have Aspinall and John Jones that we care about. And John Jones is like one fight away from retiring. And then what? We're screwed. Make sure you follow me on Instagram. I post all my pics and a bunch of memes there. Make sure you follow me on Twitter. I give pre, post, and in-fight analysis. Make sure you like me on TikTok. I post just straight up memes. Um, and yeah, just make sure you just follow all my socials. Without further ado, make sure you have a great one. You savage.